Thank you, Brother Baxter. Good evening, friends. I'm very happy to be here tonight, and I am sorry that we have uh, such a standing up uh, condition. Everybody out, out on the street, my son came down to get me, and he said, why? Well, I said, Dad, that they're standing all around out on the streets and everything. He said, hurry, hurry, hurry. So that kind of makes it... Uh, kind of hard when you have to hurry, 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 isn't it? <laughs> but it, it isn't so bad of me hurrying. It's just as bad on you having to stand like that. That's what I'm sorry about. We've been very happy to be here since uh, uh, Tallahassee. Enjoyed every moment of our time here. I hope that someday we can come back to be with you again or to... For we are really expecting someday for God to give us a hint or something and we can have services in. It's kind of hard when we have to, uh, you know, our people coming and our places maybe not big enough to take care of them. We thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for all the ministers, for what they have done. They're cooperating pastors. You tend church, work hard man like that who believes in these great principles of God, what they taught you to be true, God has come around and confirmed that it is the truth. So you must believe that. They are a man of God. So I trust that every one of you, brethren, has helped in these meetings, that your, that your services will get greater and greater all the time. And to you people, may God richly bless you. And there's been... <coughs> Many, many things that has been done in the services, but I have never said nothing about it as yet. I've just uh, let it go. But you'll find out after I'm gone, you pastors remember this, that after, after I'm gone, you'll see that there is many things that's been done that people doesn't know nothing about yet. But you'll find out that women and men will be coming to you. My stomach trouble's gone. My arthritis left. Now, pastors, you mark that down and see if that isn't true. You'll notice them saying that. So we thank you. My manager just told me they've taken a love offering for me. I appreciate that. I didn't really deserve a love offering, friend. I, I didn't. But I, I appreciate it because I'm really trying to get money together now to go to Africa and to other places. That's what I'll do with it. Send me over to Africa. Thousands and millions of people sitting in black ignorance, darkness. I know it'll go to the right place, I promise you that. And it'll, every penny of it will be used for the cause of Jesus Christ. Well, look, maybe I might have to pay a little food bill or something at home, my grocery bill and so forth. But outside of that, every cent I get goes right straight into foreign missions. Then I go myself to be sure that I that I'm getting it over there right and use it. The Lord bless you is my prayer. And I will give, brother, I believe this church there, somebody told me today that it was a Pentecostal holiness. Who's the pastor of this Pentecostal holiness? You know, brother Fisher? Is that right? I saw the picture of brother Fisher and brother Dallas Green of Lisbon Brother Bosworth showed them to me when he returned. Is that right? Well, that's very fine. Well, he's a, certainly a, Brother Freeman and I and Brother uh, Fisher, and we're all very, very fine, good friends. I'll sure bring them news that we had a real meeting down here to, in the Pentecostal Hole in this church, then, when I tell them that the Lord was with us down here. The Lord bless you all, every one of you. And now tonight, you standing here. I'm just going to read a scripture and then we'll start praying for the sick just in a few moments. I know you're tired standing. I know the ones outside and in the basement and around is tired standing. I wish there was something I could do right now. I wish there was just something that was in my power that I could just raise up and bless everybody here that they just be praising God and blessing God and everyone be healed and go out and there wouldn't be any sick or crippled or any wouldn't I love to do that oh if I could I would just do it right now but it, it isn't in me to do it I can't do it 
I'm just a man. The only thing I can do is offer prayer for you and tell you the truth. And it, by being the meetings, what the people come is it's something that the ministers has preached your pastors maybe years ago has preached to you that God would do these things just before it's only confirming what your pastors has preached to you would take place and in doing that humbly I'm trying my very best tonight to bring the gospel to you in the way that I believe God has ordained that I should preach it receive it will you and then you believe just exactly that this is the truth. Now to you on the outside and in the basement and you who are not able at this time to see in. The Lord Jesus Christ that His vicarious suffering and death at Calvary purchased healing for every mortal in the world. Every will be in the world. Jesus has already paid the price, and in the sight of God, you are already healed. There is no sickness in the sight of God. You're already healed. Every sinner here, inside, out, wherever you are, your sins, as far as God is concerned, is forgiven you now. But if you do not accept it, then when you come into His presence without the blood of Jesus up on you as a son or daughter, then you're condemned when you get there. The day you eat thereof, that day you die. Now, you don't have to die in that condition. You can't help being a sinner because you was born a sinner, but you can help be remaining a sinner. For in the sight of God, sin is already covered. He couldn't look upon sin. He, he's just and He's sovereign. He'd have to destroy his doom right then. God cannot look up on sin. He's holy. But the blood of Jesus holds it off as a bumper on the car. And every time you sin, the bumper, Jesus Christ, catches you your sin before it reaches God. Aren't you ashamed the way you've treated him? I remember one day when I looked up there and saw what he'd done for me. I crawled humbly to him. There laid my name on top of a book. Oh, what was written under. I said, Lord, will you forgive me? And seemingly he took his hands, dipped into his side and said, yes. And he wrote across that book, pardon. Closed it up, put it back in the seal of forgiveness. I've been happy ever since. I'm trying my best in my humble way to tell every mortal on earth, Jesus Christ loves you and he's the only thing that's holding the wrath of God off of you. Receive him as your personal Savior. And when you've done that, now he was also striped on his back. With his stripes, we are healed, or we were healed. Not we will be. We have already been healed. Every person has been healed. And now the only thing you have to do is to believe that first in your heart before you can say it. If you're just saying it from your lips, it won't do you any good. But from, see... We, this isn't a shallow affair. It isn't something that just like I heard someone say last evening on a, on a broadcast. Every person that believes has, has been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not disagreeing with the minister, but he, he just probably didn't understand the Scripture. Paul, in Acts the 19th chapter, asked those Baptist people up there, have they received the Holy Ghost since they believe? Not when you believe. The Holy Spirit is a gift of God after you believe. It's God's gift to you for believing. But you can believe Jesus being the Son of God and accept Him as your personal Savior and still not have the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God's personal gift to the believer. You're saved because you believe. But you're filled with the Holy Ghost when God's personal gift comes up on you, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, see, it's not a shallow affair. It's something deep. We're not babies anymore. We're men and women. 
The church should be in that condition tonight. Not shallow, but deep in God. Now, healing is not something that you just say, well, I, I, I believe it, I believe it. Now, that's all right. If that's the best you can do, just mentally, or just say, well, I, yes, I, I see it, I believe that, I accept it. Then if you accept it on those bases, keep saying it over and over. Say it out loud. Say it over and over. Just keep saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say it until actually you believe it. And when you believe it, then it's going to take place. Don't have a negative testimony. Every time when you confess, well, I still feel bad today, I guess I... You go right straight back in the same rut that you was in the beginning. Amen. There's not a man or woman in here that's baptized with the Holy Spirit. But what would start your confession? I believe I've lost the Holy Spirit. I believe it's gone from me. I believe I, you'll go right down. You'll never. Can you listen close? You'll never live above your confession. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Is that right? Now, Hebrews 3, 1. Now, any scholar knows that same word profession is confession too. Same translation. Now, setting at the right hand of the Father to make intercessions upon what? Our confession. He can't do nothing for you until first you confess he's done it. See? When you accept it. Now, I wasn't saved. I'm not saved tonight because I get happy and shout. That isn't it. I'm not saved because the gift of God works through me. I'm saved because I have met the conditions that Jesus Christ required for me. I'm saved according to the Bible. See? Is that right? See? Um, and not because I feel like I'm saved. Satan can whoop you around a stump on your feelings. But he can't when it's thus saith the law. See? He can't go that. He can't wait across that. That'll defeat him. Now, when you believed you were saved, sitting in your seat, out in the, wherever you was, you accepted it and began to confess and tell people you were saved. Well, you kept on saying, I'm saved. The people said, there no difference in you. But you believed there was. Is that right? And you kept with your confession and after a while at work righteousness, all your neighbors and everybody knows you're saved now. Because you believed it, you confessed it. Why, how, what happened? What changed you? He's the high priest of your confession, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making good what you're confessing. Now, that's the same thing it is by healing. You accept Him as your healer. Renounce your feelings. It's not by feelings. It's by faith. Say you're healed. Believe you're healed. Act like you're healed. Associate with those who believe in healing. And God will bring you right out to a perfect soundness of hell. It will not fail. Just an illustration. I'm trying to get faith moving, you see. So I can see what the Holy Spirit will do here for us in a few minutes. Don't never look at symptoms. Lady, don't you look because you're sitting in a wheelchair. Oh, this young fellow here. That's no more to God than the heel of toothache. Don't make a bit of it. But now look. He's a high priest of, of your confession. Now, if there's any fellow that ought to have had a, a bad case of symptoms, would have been Jonah when he was going down to Nineveh. He was backslid. Going to Nineveh or to Tarsha instead of Nineveh on the wrong ship, going the wrong way, backslid, running from God in a stormy sea. They tied his hands, feet, throwed him out of the ship. He went out into the sea. A whale swallowed him and went plumb to the bottom of the sea to rest his swimmers. It was all fish up. There he was, tied hands and feet, backslid, a stormy sea, many fathoms deep in the sea in the belly of a whale. If there's anybody should have had symptoms, it was Jonah. He looked this way, it was a whale's belly. Everywhere he looked, it was a whale's belly. But he refused to look at it. You look, say, I'm sitting here. Somebody else looks, say, well, the doctor told me I had heart trouble. I had arthritis. Refused to see it. Refused to believe it. That's right. Jonah said, there are lying vanities. He said, once more will I look to your holy temple. Told God, because when Solomon dedicated that temple, he said, if thy people be in trouble anywhere and look to this holy place and pray, then you hear from heaven. And he believed, Jonah, believed that God heard Solomon's prayer. And he started saying, I'll not look at this whale's belly. I'll not think about my backslidden condition. I'm looking towards your holy temple and making confessions. And God sent oxygen down there and kept him alive for three days and nights and took him right in the middle of where he belonged. Well, if Solomon prayed that prayer, 
And if there's no one here that's in the condition or halfway like Jonah was, you can't got nothing like the symptoms he had. Well, if he in that condition could look to a temple where it was built by hands of a man and an earthly being, a man, Solomon, sitting and praying and could have faith in Solomon's prayer, how much more ought you and I tonight sitting here look to the throne of God where Jesus stands at his right hand with his blood there to make intercessions on your confession? Just refuse to have the symptoms. Symptoms is something like, say, tomorrow when you go home now to your place, the express agent will come up and say, are you Mrs. Doe? Yes. I have a present for you. All right. What is it? He hands over a, a basket or box. And you hear something hitting in that box, you look at it, it's a big box of snakes, rattlesnakes. Well, you don't want them things. Well, you say, I don't want them. Oh, but they're yours. Somebody sent them to you. Here's your name. Here's the name. And somebody sent these snakes to you. They're yours. You have to take them. Now, in one sense, the word they're yours. In another sense, they're not. Somebody sent them to you, but they're not yours until you sign for them, that you've received them. And when you sign, you received them, then they're yours. But if you refuse to sign for him, he has to take him back to the express company. The express company has to send him to the one that sent him to you. Is that right? Well, don't sign for nothing the devil brought. No, sir. Just refuse to have it. No, sir. Say, I just haven't got it. Devil, you take it all back. That's all. I won't have it. Refuse to have your sickness, your arthritis, whatever it is. I just haven't got it. By his stripes, I'm healed. Stand right on your ground. Confess it. Believe it. Stay there. God will bring it to pass. Amen. No matter what it is, just believe him. Yeah. All right. You're a lovely group of people. <laughs> I'm not a much of a preacher, but I'd sure like to talk a little while tonight, but I can't. I'm, I'm afraid I'll get away from the... I've been praying all for hours now for the anointing of the... for healing, and then come right around and start preaching. It wouldn't be just a thing to do. I want to read some scripture, and then we'll call the prayer line. St. John, the fifth chapter, 33, 33rd verse beginning. Listen close now. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but the things which I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his life. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given unto me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And we bow our heads just a moment everywhere, if you will. I'm deep sincerity, friend. Inside out everywhere. Now let's look to the author and finisher of our faith, who promised if two or three would gather together, his name, he'd be there. Now, Lord, we believe that you're right here. We come, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, because we have no name or merits of our own to come in. If we would come in our own name, you would not receive us. But we are so deeply concerned tonight about sick people and the conditions of these, your children, till we come placing the name of him who promised that if we come in his name, that you'd hear our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, that I'll do. So we come in his name, knowing that the God of heaven, the great Amoya, the that looks down, on this church night, look, standing out in the yard, down through the basement, those great x-ray eyes of yours look right through to the soul of man. There's nothing hid. You know everything. You know every person. Not even a sparrow could fall in the street without you knowing about it. How much more do you know we're praying now? Father, will you, will you do this for us tonight? If I have found favor in your sight, Lord, I've tried my best to serve you and to all I know how. Knowing that I've made many mistakes and deserve to be cut off tonight. But it's through your grace, Lord, 
that we're here. Lord, since you have told me and sent me out to pray for the sick, I've tried to be humble. I didn't have to have great big places to go to. The little church is all right for me. Or there just forever seemed like you want me to go. I tried to go. I've always tried to give honor and glory to Jesus Christ, our Savior. I'm trying to carry out the work that I feel that He has started back there and promised to be with the people to the end of the world, giving Him all praise and glory. Now, Lord, look down upon this waiting group of people. Send the great Spirit of God upon them. And may, as it were, the angel of healing stretch his great wings across this building tonight, shut off all unbelief, and may there be such a great joy in this camp after a while, and they just run under his feathers, Lord, and wait, and may the great distilled drops of mercy and faith drop down from his wings upon every person, that they'll just drop loose from every sin, every shackle, be free and come and serve thee. Be healed of their sickness. And when we are going to our separate homes tonight, God bless each one. May we stay as them for me, may us. Did our hearts burn within us? Because of His presence. God bless this little church. Bless every church is cooperating. And someday, Lord grant that if it be Thy will, we can return to this lovely city and there have an old-fashioned revival for many, many weeks. Many things might be done. Or we ask that in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. And now, let's begin tonight. They give out an all new group of prayer cards today. A whole new group. Many, many. Starting with the letter M. And now, we'll have can't stand too many a time. How many could we stand? All right. Who was it? Okay. The pastor's... Brother Baxter and them suggested we just call about three at a time, because keep them from standing up. All right, that'll be just fine. Well, let's start right out the first one, then just start right down. Who's got M1? Where's it at? M1, prayer card M1. Look on your prayer cards. It'll, it'll be a little card like this. They'll have your name and address on the front of it, on this side over here, has, on this side down here, has um, a letter M. It'll be a one. M1, M2, M3. Let's see if we can get them out. Some of them, I guess, outside. Some of them's in the afternoon meeting. Some of them may be standing down in the basement. Wherever you are, has got prayer cards beginning with the letter M. Be ready now to be called. We have M1, M2, M3. That'd be enough to 